In this video, I'm going to show you how I do my handheld focus stacking out in the wild. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In the last video, I talked about the basics of focus stacking and in this video, I want to show you how I do my handheld focus stacking on live subjects. So I need to address the elephant that's in the room here and that is the gear. Now in all my videos I say that when you want to get started in macro photography, gear is not important. And I still stand by that, you can take the basic equipment and get started in macro photography. However, focus stacking is more of an advanced technique. And for this technique, the gear does matter. There's two things I want to point out here. That is the frame rate of your camera, that's the frames per second that you can take on burst mode and an image stabilized lens or sensor. So I'm currently holding my Canon 650D and unfortunately I don't stack with this camera because the frames per second is too slow. And the ATD that's currently filming, that has a higher frame per second when in continuous shooting. So I always use that camera for focus stacking. So every image you're seeing in this video has been taken on the Canon ATD. I'm just using the 650D as a demonstration. And the reason this is important is the frames per second is frames per second. It means how many frames the camera can capture within one second. The higher your frame rate, the better your chances are of getting a good photo stack. Now the second thing is an image stabilized lens or sensor. This means that you can go a little bit lower on your shutter speed and still get a sharp result. Now another reason I focus stack as well is in conditions like this where the sun's just going down, the insects are starting to calm down, I can't get away with an f16 on my f-stop. So focus stacking allows me to open up my aperture, get more light, increase my shutter speed, but at the same time still get a whole insect in focus. So now we have the technical stuff out of the way, let's get down to the actual focus stacking itself. So whenever I'm focus stacking, I'm setting my camera to AV and selecting my f-stop. So the f-stop I'm going to be using will be anything between f4 and f8, depending on the lighting situation. Again, I'm using an image stabilized lens, so I can get away with having a higher f-stop. The wider your f-stop, the more images you're going to have to take to get a full stack. The most important part here, is to set your camera into continuous shooting. We are on manual focus, and exactly the same as we did in the studio, I'm gonna focus just in front of the insect. Now we're gonna pretend there's an insect here because there isn't one. Um, I'm just using it in demonstration purposes. But we're gonna focus just in front of the insect. So what I'll do is I will press the shutter button, our burst will start, and as it bursts, I will move forward with the camera to cover the whole subject. You can see there, that's why you need a higher frames per second. The higher frame per second, the more chance you'll get of getting your shot. One of the main reasons why a stack won't work is because the insect or the bush flower that it's on is moving in the wind. This is something that's unavoidable. Again, a higher FPS on your camera can limit that mistakes. But if your insect is moving around on the bush like these bumblebees here, then you're not gonna get a successful stack. This is where coming out in the mornings or in the evening is beneficial because the temperature is lower and your insects are less active, giving you a much higher chance of getting a successful stack. And that's the easy part. The easy part is taking the pictures. Once you've set your camera up, you just go around and you just take pictures of everything you find. The magic happens in the computer and that's what we need to do now. We need to take these pictures into the computer and take a look, but for me, I've got to take the ATD out now and capture some more focus stacked insects. So again, just to recap, you put your camera into continuous mode, you focus at the front of your subject, press and hold the shutter button and just move the camera in to get your stacks. So you can see here, uh, at the end of each stack, you can see there's a picture of my hand. That shows me where the stack begins and ends and I'm able to select all of those images and put them into a stack file. So the stack file is just something that Lightroom can do just to indicate that 
they're all stacked images but it only shows one thumbnail just a little bit better for organization and as you can imagine sorting out these stacks which work which don't has taken quite a while because i did take over i think 2000 images so i've cut all that out because there's no need for you to go through that boredom these are the ones that i have selected and i've selected them for a few reasons some of them work some of them don't i'm going to explain why okay so we have our damselfly one just here let me come to the develop so you can see it better this one you're familiar with what i want to do first is just touch on the subject of uh, moving subjects and if your stack doesn't work now this is from a bumblebee and the stack didn't work on this occasion because he's foraging around and i'm still able to get a good capture on a single frame of the image and what i can do now is i can just select one of my presets let's go with Give it that one. There we go. Okay. And our noise levels are not too bad. We can easily recover those noise levels in Lightroom. But you can see there how you're not at a disadvantage by attempting a stack because you can still get that single frame where the eye is in focus. Okay, so we all know that if a subject's moving, it's not going to make for a good stack. What I want to do is I want to show you something now where um, the subject appears to not be moving however the stack won't work because it did move okay so i have this other fly here we have five images in this stack i'm just going to right click editing and open as layers in photoshop and this is one of those instances where the stack doesn't work and i want to show you this first before we get onto the editing of the image where the stacks do work so we have our hover fly here and i'm just going to turn off all the layers you can see there how I am handheld because that's why it's moving around so much. Okay. Now Photoshop can compensate for that quite easily. What we don't want is if we look here, is this image here. Everything is out of focus. So when you go through your stacks, you've always got a couple of images where everything is out of focus. You want to remove those before you start your stack. We're going to remove that one. Okay. I select all my layers come to edit auto align layers again vignette removal is unticked geometric distortion is unticked as well we're on automatic we'll click ok now photoshop has aligned that image so we can go through here look we can already see from that one how the fly has already moved okay i'm going to show you what happens when we stack this now let's come to auto blend layers Stacked images, seamless tones and colors, content aware, fill transparent areas. Exactly the same as we did on the last video, okay? Nothing has changed on the settings. So on first inspection, you're probably thinking, wow, that looks good. The whole fly is in focus. However, there's a few issues. For start off, check out the wing just there. That's completely failed. And on his face there, okay? first of all let's have a look at the wing you can see there how the wing moved in between some of the uh, images and that's resulted in that and here you can see how his head has moved although photoshop's done a good job here we've got a little bit of a problem just there you can see there and indeed you can go in there and edit this and recover it what you can do is choose which layer you like and just mask out that particular layer and keep it i'm not going to do that in this video because honestly it will take quite a long time but you can do that to recover it okay so i've just loaded up another image of a butterfly here and i want to show you another example of some things that can mess up your stack so first of all we'll do the same again i'm going to come down or click the bottom layer and see what we have it's uh, blurred that's our start layer Next one is blurred, that's another start layer. And this is where we start coming into focus here on the end of the wing. Then we come to the middle part of his ring. And then onto his head. And then finally some of his legs and antennae. And the antennae is what I want to talk about. Because these antennae are constantly moving. Okay? And they can throw out your stack. However, you can recover it using Photoshop. Okay, so you can see here how his antennae have completely messed up. However, the rest of him looks okay. Now, this is an easy fix. All we need to do is ID 
which layers we want to keep. And on this picture, we want to keep this antennae here and possibly this one. Okay. So all we've got to do there is we need to ID the layer. So there's one layer just there. Grab a black brush and we will mask that out. There we go. That's the same for this one here. Okay. And we want this layer here to be gone. Let's get rid of that as well. There we go. Okay, so on top of that, I'm going to create a new layer. But we're going to put that above this layer here. Okay. You can see our masked area is just there. Let's just get rid of that. Because we don't need those. There we go. And on our new layer, I'm going to call this edits. We're going to grab. We're going to grab the healing brush tool. Making sure we're on all layers. I'm going to click the OK key define the area where the clone is going to come from and then we can just paint it in and you're always better cloning from quite close to where you're fixing you can see there how we've just done that quite quickly and easily i can now do the same here and we are going to get areas where it's not going to work. Bear in mind, I am doing this very quickly, okay? But that's how you can easily fix antennae problems because they're constantly going up and down the antennae are on these bugs and uh, they will throw out your stack. But if you see something like that, don't throw the stack away because you can fix it. Let's deal with the one you've come here to see, and that is the damselfly image. If I click on this number here, that will unload our stack, so you can see exactly what's in it. And if we come through here, you'll be able to see the stack. And you can see it's handheld from the way it's moving around. Okay, and I would say this is the image you would use if you're just doing one frame. That's probably the image that I would use. Okay, so let's take these into Photoshop now. Exactly the same as before, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. While this is loading into Photoshop, it's a good time to talk about software. Although I'm using Photoshop, you don't have to. There's a lot of uh, focus stacking software that's out there. Serene Stacker is uh, one example. Helicon Focus is another one. There's also some free ones as well. I'm gonna link those in the description of this video for you to take a look at. Now, if you do a lot of focus stacking, which I don't, I need to declare that, I don't do that much focus stacking, okay, because it drives the computer mad, okay? But if you do do a lot, then I would recommend you get one of the dedicated soft, because they do work brilliantly. Okay, so we are done. We are in Photoshop now. I'm just going to check this bottom one, which, hey, hey, get off. There you go. So, you can see there's some hairs that are in focus there, so I'm going to leave that one there. You see the noise levels as well. We can fix all of that later. We'll do that in Lightroom. Okay, so I'm going to select all the layers. Edit, auto align layers, click OK. And again, it's exactly the same as we've done before. I'm probably repeating myself now and you might be getting a bit bored. Okay, so we are now aligned. You can see that from the corners. Again, edit. Auto blend layers and we're going to blend those into one stacked image. So what we're stacking is we're stacking 20 images that were handheld using the Canon ATD which is recording right now. Fantastic camera. And I'm a bit disappointed that I can't physically show you how I do this out in the field because of the limitations of the 650D. So I am considering getting a second Canon ATD so as I can start showing you focus stacking out in the field. Okay so we are almost stacked. There we go. Okay, so you can see here now, we have our finished stack, and I'm quite happy with that. There is some issues, 
that need fixing. Some of these little dots here that will require taking out. These hairs here I'm not too happy about because they look like they don't belong to the damselfly. And of course we have issues around the edges here. Now those will get fixed through cropping the image. So I'm just going to show you now a quick retouch on this stack now. So let's deal with this area here. Okay, now just in case you can't see what I'm talking about, let me just highlight it for you. So we have an area just there, okay, where the damselfly's hairs haven't quite come out. We also have a little area here that's bugging me a little bit. But if I just zoom out, you can see there how it's standing out. So what we can do is again, same as we did last time, I'm just going to bring this up a bit so I can see my stacks, uh, my layers, and I'm going to look for the layer where those particular hairs are on. That's going to be at the back somewhere, isn't it? Because that's where it was. Okay, yep, it's the last one. Okay, now I'm going to grab a black brush. And I'm just going to brush that out. We'll then turn the layers back on. At some point, we have to select the layer that we want to replace it with. And I'm going to select this one. Put over those colours. Okay, put these back on. And you can see there how that just looks a lot better because it's not standing out. Now for this part here, I'm not too sure what that is, I'll be honest with you. Did he move? Did he not move? I don't know. So, I'm going to find, in fact we don't need to find it. That layer there, what we can do, let's grab our brush and just paint that part on top. There we go. So let's bring up that layer, which we don't need. You can go away. We don't need that layer. And I'm going to put a new layer on for edits. Now this is uh, the layer we're going to go in and fix all the little issues. So obviously the hairs we fixed. Now we filled in this space in the middle here, but it does have a bit of an issue of a sharp edge. So I'm just going to go in there and we will try, let's try the healing spot brush first. And all we want to do is just get rid of that sharp edge. That didn't do a good job. Let's try a bigger brush. Nope. So when that doesn't work, just switch over to the clone tool. Now define a source, which we're going to do from there. I can then line that up and just go over it. Okay. It's looking a little bit better. We have an issue just here with our stack. We want to fix that up a little bit. And possibly do that just blur it a little bit just a little bit that's all we need because when a viewer looks at it they don't know you've edited it there so they're not going to be looking for it you know it's there because you've edited it okay so next let's clean up some of these little dots edit we'll just click once there we go Now you can go through and clean up all of that if you want to. I'm not going to because the video will be way too long. So the final step now is to crop it and do some colour grading. So I'm going to take my crop tool. And we're going to crop for Instagram. So we're going to do a 5x4. Okay. Bring it up a little bit. I want my... In fact, I'm going to go 4x5. Okay, a bit better. Now I want the damselfly's eyes roughly where the rule of thirds is. 
And another point that I didn't make out in the field is with the ATD, I have more megapixels. So with the ATD, I can crop in a lot more and get away with it than I can with the 650D. Another bonus of shooting macro on the ATD. The more megapixels, the better. Right, so now we've got it to this stage. You've fixed everything that's bugging you about it. We're ready for color grading. And for that, I'm going to take it into Lightroom. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to create a new folder called Edits. I'll call it Dam for Damselfly. Click Save. Bring under Discard Layers and click OK. I'm going back into Lightroom. I'm going to come to my library. Select my Images folder. I'm just going to synchronize this. This will pick up that new folder that we've just created. Okay, there's our edit folder. There's our damselfly. Okay, so this next part is going to be a bit of an anticlimax because all I do now is just select one of my presets right there. Just the uh, this is the cellar spider, which I created to photograph cellar spiders, which I've never published because they didn't turn out very good. But anyway, that's the preset I used here, and you can see there how we have our damselfly image. So that's it. That's how I created my 20 image handheld photo stack of a damselfly. Give it a go because at the end of the day, it's digital. You're not going to lose no money by giving it a go. And as I said, with the bumblebee image, there's, you've always got that one image that you can use. I hope you've got something from this video. I really hope that I've conveyed how I did it because I've not been able to use the A to D to physically show you. That's something I might look into the future to remedy by getting a second day to do that way I can actually start showing you focus stacking out in the field and also macro videography out in the field. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like if you did. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. My name is Stuart Wood and as always I'll see you on the next video. So every vi So the higher your frame rate, the more chances your heart So now we have the technical Cars. This f-stop can be anywhere between f4 and f8 depending on the lighting conditions and again the lighting conditions here will be different. Shut up! Again a higher um, what's it called? This is where coming out in the morning or wait until the evening when the <laughs> I'm on my own today. Fuck off. I'm not in the mood for photographing you. This technique is also useful for being able to lower your... Not lower. In this video, I'm going to show you how I... I can tread on my own feet. Back again. Take 36. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do my handheld focus statting... Stat so while this is loaded in Photoshop, it's a good opportunity to talk about software. Now I'm currently using Photoshop. There are many other photo 